I'm here in the shade at the Newburgh waterfront to check out this Raleigh Clubman road bike. And there's a lot to cover here, so let's get started. The first thing I want to talk about is the elephant in the room. This big, padded Panasonic saddle. It's comfortable, it's got a great logo, it even has springs on the bottom. But this saddle does not belong on this bike. And in fact, I think it ruins the bike's entire aesthetic. But we're not going to worry about that too much, because the saddle is pretty easy to change. Now let's check out the stem. I've never really seen anything like this. It's kind of like a lugged stem. It's got like a lug right here, and some more lug work there. But there's no bolt in the top. And as you go down, there's a collar, and there's a nut and bolt in the collar, and I assume that's how you adjust the stem. Now, I'm not gonna mess with it, but it's a pretty nice stem. The handlebars are aluminum, and they're wrapped with these Lycra spandex grips, which aren't exactly appropriate to the bike, but that's not a big deal. Then we come down to these GB brake levers, which are pretty basic, ordinary brake levers. They probably came original to the bike, but it seems like a bike this special maybe deserves something a little nicer than that. On the other side of the handlebars, you got a Sturmey Archer three and four speed shifter, which is important because this bike actually has four speeds instead of three. It's a very interesting feature. Continuing downward, we have a very nice headset. Then your traditional Raleigh logo. And then the front brakes, which are also by GB, and which are made of something called Hyluminum, whatever that is. Working our way down the head tube, you have pretty decent lug work. And then you get to this fork, which has a recessed fork cap. And then a nice Raleigh logo on the side of the fork leg. And since this bike was designed for touring, it wouldn't be complete without a light bracket. This is a Raleigh light bracket with their typical swan design. And it's got a really unique square bolt that holds it in place. Further down the fork is where things get really interesting. You got chrome fork tips, then you've got these Weinman quick release butterfly nuts, which apparently are illegal now because they're dangerous, but they sure look cool. Then here's some wing nuts that hold the fender struts in place. And finally, this high flange hub, which appears to have alloy flanges and a steel body. Of course, the hubs have to be attached to rims, and the rims on this bike are pretty unique. They're Dunlop special lightweight rims, not made out of plain chrome-plated steel or aluminum, but stainless steel. And they're in a 27 by one and a quarter size, which means finding tires for this bike should be pretty easy. Now, fanning out from the fork, you have fender struts, which are attached to these sort of cream-colored plastic fenders. I don't really like these fenders because they're flimsy and they're old and they're yellowed, but I think they're original, so I'll leave them in place. Now I've had at least 100 vintage three speeds with the Sturmey Archer three speed hub, but this is the first one I've ever had that's a Sturmey Archer four speed hub, so check this out. See, it's not exactly easy to get in here with the camera, but you can see not only does it say four speed, but it also says 50, which dates the bike to 1950. There are plenty more details of the rear end, but first I wanted to show you this can light. Apparently the former owner decided to eschew a generator in favor of some D-cells. So that's what we got. And I bet with a little effort we could make it work. Now let's take a look at the great Raleigh graphics on this bike. These graphics are ahead of their time. They have kind of like a 60s or 70s retro hip vibe to them. But this bike was made in 1950. Now the graphic treatment continues to the seat tube where we see the Clubman logo and above and below that there are some really cool graphic touches. And of course the decal that we don't want to forget, that Reynolds 531. Yeah, this frame was made out of Reynolds tubing. That's pretty nice. Here's a closer look at the details on the seat tube junction with the pulley and the seat clamp nut and the cable guides. And on the other side, there's some unfortunate scraping of the seat stay, but I guess that's not the end of the world. Here on the bottom bracket, we can see a cool little detail, which is this oiling port, so you don't have to disassemble the bottom bracket and the cottered cranks to get in there and lube things up. Now the rear end has these beautiful chrome stays, and it does have the brackets for the wing nuts for the fender struts, and unfortunately a couple of the fender struts are missing, but those shouldn't be too hard to source. The rear fender has a classic Raleigh logo, and some yellowing and scratching and staining and wear. And then down here at the bottom, we've got this fantastic Raleigh rear reflector to keep you safe at night. 
Another great detail on the chainstay is this pinstriping right here. But unfortunately, you can also see a little bit of scraping where the sprocket has been hitting over the years. So that might mean the sprocket's a little bit out of alignment. Since this bike is a four speed, all it really needs is this single crank up front. And Raleigh did a really good job with that, with the removable sprocket and swans. The pedals on this bike are really nice cage pedals, which do the job just fine and have Christo toe clips with the leather straps that are heavily worn, but still intact. Unfortunately, what I found out last night when I took the bike for a little ride is that the left pedal is incredibly loose on the spindle. But despite little problems like that, I'd say this bike has survived really, really well over the years. It's missing some of the rear fender struts. It certainly has its share of paint scrapes. There's some rust on the bottom bracket, and the pump is completely shot. Not to mention, of course, the Panasonic seat, which isn't bad in and of itself, but just doesn't belong on this bike. But despite those relatively minor problems, I would say that this is a pretty stunning example with fantastic patina of a beautiful bike made in merry old England. Thanks for watching.